Tony Harris, welcome. So the Prime Minister and Senior Ministers are saying the Secretary of the Department, Prime Minister and Cabinet has found there was no political motivation in the awarding of these grants. That's it. Nothing more to see here. Move on. Should the public accept that? No, no. Well, one, because we haven't seen that report. We've only heard the Prime Minister's version of the report. We don't know whether it was cherry-picked or whether it was biased. And, and besides, it's not an independent report. The Secretary of the Department is not independent of the Prime Minister. So the report um, really can't be given its full weight that we would like to. Apart from that, um, we don't have... Uh, we don't have answers to a couple of things that are entirely interesting and relevant. Uh, for example, wh why colour code marginal seats and seats of interest if you're not going to make decisions on that basis? Um, secondly, um, when, f when the report issued by the Secretary of the Department of Prime Minister and Cabinet said that no undue preference was given to marginal seats, if you take away the double negatives, you've got due preference was given to marginal seats. Uh, and I prefer the Auditor General's report, I think, to the report given by uh, Mr Gajans. Mm. So looking at the broader picture here, what, why is it so important for the public to see this report that was done by Phil Gajans? Well, what we want to be assured of are two things. Firstly, that there was no misconduct in office by public officials. Uh, and secondly, that there was no electoral bribery by public officials. Each of those is a serious offence. Each of them carries um, imprisonment as, as a penalt poss possible penalty. And um, we, we, we don't have that assurance yet. We have no one really unbiased and unprejudiced who has provided a legal advice on whether there's been a, an offence committed by officials working for the government. So has the Prime Minister got any grounds to keep this report confidential? No, in my view, no. If he wants us to rely on the report, he should release it. I presume he doesn't wish to release it because it won't stand up to scrutiny. That's the only reason I can think of for not releasing it. In his media conference yesterday, the Prime Minister was talking about the importance of transparency and that's why the rules will change in future about the administration of these programs. How does that talk of transparency tally with how he's dealing with the analysis of this previous Look, program? All, all ministers are telling us this. They're saying it's, it's quite normal for ministers to take advice from their department and to make the decision. Uh, and all of that is nonsense. The, 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 there's no department involved. The law here is fairly clear. We've got the Australian Sports Commission. It was established by Parliament to be independent of the government and to run independently of the minister. So for, for government ministers, and they've all done it, for government ministers to say there's nothing, norm, nothing abnormal here is just incorrect. And, and so just another attempt by ministers to mislead the voters, and, and, and they keep on doing it. So uh, it's important for us to get to the bottom of this because, as I said, there, there can be some serious offences that have been committed that the government is shying away from. They seem to be suggesting that the problem was in the design of this. It, the way it was set up initially, there, there are heaps of other grants programs that are done this way, and it was simply a design problem with the start of this, and that will be fixed now. What do you make of that? No, there was nothing wrong with the design of the program. There was, um, the, the, the Act gives the Sports Commission the power to make grants. So uh, the, the law is quite clear on that. Parliament intended that the Sports Commission make grants. Uh, the Parliament provided money to the Sports Commission to make grants. And then we had the, uh, the government intervening in that process um, in, in a way that, as I said, is suggestive of advancing their own purposes um, rather than the purposes for which the program was properly designed. Could the Audit Office have got it wrong? The Auditor found there was blatant political motivation. We've seen the colour-coded spreadsheets. Is it conceivable the Auditor just got it wrong? No. Uh, the process that audits take is quite thorough. So not only do they prepare the draft, they then provide the draft to the departments and the authorities concerned so that they may comment on it. And that gives the, them the, the, the opportunity to correct any errors that they find in the draft audit report. 
It's then that the Auditor General releases the final report and uh, it, it will withstand scrutiny. Well, it, well, it, it, ha has, it, has, it, hasn't, it hasn't withstood the scrutiny of the Secretary of the Department, Prime Minister and Cabinet. Well, we don't know that, Joe, because we haven't seen the Secretary's report. But I even if Phil Gajan's report opposes the Auditor General totally, I have a report on my left, which is a report done by a public servant whose job is dependent on the Prime Minister, and a report on my right by a, an Auditor General who's an Officer of Parliament, and I know which one I would prefer. Mm. So does someone still have to be held accountable for the way this program was run? Yes, the idea that it's, it's all, it, it can all be forgiven because, or forgotten because the Minister forgot to acknowledge her membership of a club is really just a convenient way of trying to bury it. You, you, you're trying to bury um, uh, an oxen in, in, a, in, a, flower, in a flower pot. It, uh, it won't work. So what, what's the danger for Australian democracy and parliamentary standards and ministerial standards if this is not pursued further? Right. Well, it's interesting that no, no federal minister has ever been charged with any offence of office by the federal police. That's not true of Queensland. It's not true of New South Wales. It's not true of Western Australia. It's only the Commonwealth minister, ministers that have uh, evaded or avoided um, any attention by the federal police. So uh, I, I, I think that's either a degree of luck or it's, or it's because the federal police are a little uh, vague about their responsibilities. What I would like to see, and I think it is important, is that ministers be brought to account for the full range of law, including misconduct of office, never, never an offence in the Commonwealth, and electoral bribery, never an offence in the Commonwealth. Mm. So to what extent will the adoption of the rules, because the government says it's going to adopt recommendation four of this report, uh, to what extent uh, that will that, uh, and that they're going to cover programs like the Sports Australia one, to what extent will that change things in the future? Are you confident this will clear things up? No. Look, Professor Toomey put it quite well. The fact that the rules don't apply in this situation is because they were not intended, ministers were not intended to have anything to do with the grants. Um, so it's a, it's a kind of a charade that we would... What, what the Auditor General is trying to do is, if the, if the Minister breaks the law again, well, we want to make sure that they follow the rules. Well, I would rather the Minister not break the law in the first place, if, if that can be shown to be true. Mm. What does this whole episode show about the need for a designated federal anti-corruption body? Well, yes. Um, the, the, the Commonwealth has been very shy, the, the, the coalition government has been very shy about having an anti-corruption body and we can see why. This would have been referred to it in an instant had it existed. The fact that it, hasn't, it doesn't exist though should not have stopped the Auditor General from referring the matter to the Federal Police. They're the, they're the alternative in this case. But it is, it is crucially important that the Commonwealth establish an anti-corruption commission, one which the government has very little to do with, one where the government doesn't appoint the commissioner, one where the government does not determine the funding of the commission, one, a, a commission that is a body of parliament that is independent of the government. And what's the danger if Australia continues without that? Well, we, we are emboldening ministers to do more and more uh, in the national interest to make sure that they're re-elected. Uh, to use a, a phrase that's coming out of the Trump arena. Um, we, we are seeing more and more that uh, politicians believe it's in the national interest that they be re-elected, and thus it's, anything they do is in the national interest. Mm. OK, Tony Harris, thanks so much for talking to us this morning from Canberra. Pleasure, Joe.